Hello there. You can't really tell from the timing when this video is released, but I am recording right after I failed making one of these. I broke the piece I have carefully machined for around three weeks. I mean, I wasn't machining it for three weeks, I was just doing multiple visits to the, to the workshop. Anyhow, you can imagine that I am pretty annoyed and what better thing to do when you are annoyed than to rant a bit. So this is what, precisely what I'm going to do. Uh, this rant has marinated in me for like ever since a boost was released. So here goes. Oh, by the way, if you see me looking at here, because I have a script here, because my rage, rage, my rage, my rage is pretty much uh, unbound when it comes to this. So I was writing it down and trying to distill it into well, how to say it nicely without swearing, into a pretty concise form which will allow me to channel my inner rage, my inner mm, bubbling cauldron of hatred, calmly and intelligently. Here goes. I am not really hiding the fact that I despise SRAM Corporation, not products branded by SRAM, for those I have pretty ambivalent opinion on, what I had was simply average, but the corporation. SRAM is right there with Fox on the forefront of making the life of an average, well, everyone who rides bikes of non-department store quality worse, to a varying magnitude, but worse nonetheless. Now, the topic of this video is Boost, which is the new, but no current, uh, standard of the axle spacing for mountain bikes and I guess we're going to get something for road bikes soon enough. Responsible are SRAM and Trek. In essence, boost spacing for the rear takes the established 124mm axle spacing, which is actually tried good and tested 135 with some, well, ease of use added to it, and widen this, widens this to 148mm. To make the despised quick release linger for a little longer, uh, it also takes the 135 quick release and widen the, widens it to 141 quick, 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 quick release. On the front side of things, a boost 15 millimeters take the, takes the 15 uh, millimeter by 100 to a 15 by 110. In both cases, flanges of the hubs are widened from its predecessor standard by three and five millimeters on each side respectively. In order to compensate for widened stance of the rear hub, Boost also introduces a Boost spaced, uh, spaced crank sets with a chain line shifted by 3mm to the outside of the bike. What also gets introduced, which is actually new, is a 20 by 110 Boost front wheel spacing, which is a totally different from the 20 by 110 uh, spacing which we used in the past. Uh, it differs by one day widening the hub flanges and moves the disc brake mount on the hub uh, further outside to, the, uh, to what Marsochi did in 1999. So it is entirely different, but of course it's different but the same. Anyhow, let's go back a bit. A few years ago, 215 or 216 to be exact, a trend of plus bikes was emerging in the mountain bike world. Essentially, without boring you with the details, uh, bikes with tires sized in the 3 uh, mm, three inch territory instead of the more commonplace than 2.3 and calling it a plus. Uh, it made things more or better because more or better is what sells in the mountain bike world. However, those thicker tires introduced a clearance problem. A chain a chain could be snugged by a rear wheel, uh, which would then proceed uh, to do horrible things with it. And it worked in this way that uh, when you are riding on a very low gear, uh, the knobs on the on the on the tire, as the chain is being uh, swinged around, uh, could simply snug on the on the chain and drag it with itself and cause problems. Uh, in order to fix for this. Uh, obviously we had to move the chain further out. We can argue that the plus trend was emergent uh, or it was manufactured by the bike biz which obviously is longing for the next big thing every year but it is irrelevant. 
And the thing is that uh, instead of doing the same thing that would solve the problem, which would be the problem of a chain being snagged, which would be going toward the already established 140, 157 by 12 axle standard and somewhat wider stanced cranks, which were also standard, SRAM and Trekt vomited us some boost. Am I being too negative? I probably am. So what are the pretenses under which boost is being sold? Firstly, as I said before, it adds the space for thicker tires. Not that we needed that space because people were doing 3 inch tire before, but okay, fine, it solved the issue. But truth be told, the issue is really relevant for drivetrains with, uh, with front derailers because the granny puts the chain really close to the rear tire. And of course, <laughs> the market moved towards single ring setups, which pretty much made the entire reason, or this reason for Boost's existence, irrelevant. Yet most better quality bikes now come with a Boost rear spacing and forks uh, come with Boost front. So, why? Well, because wider span spaced flanges mean laterally stiffer wheels. But do they really? Well, yes. We can estimate that for the rear wheel, and depending on the rim and wheel size and hub fan geometry, we can get about uh, 13 to 14% uh, laterally stiffer wheel using boost spacing. And that is significant. So it settles that, right? Boost is great. It's a touch more complicated than that. Let's concentrate on the rear wheel now. Majority of wheels these days are asymmetrical. If you are using disc brakes and or derailleur gears, at least your rear wheel certainly is. In such a wheel, lateral stiffness and frankly the overall structure, uh, structural integrity of the wheel is decided by the side with steeper spokes. Let's call it the tense side or the tension side. For the front disc wheel, it's the size on the uh, disc side, and on the rear wheel, it's the drive side. Conversely, let's call the other side a slack side. So, tense is where the spokes are tensioned higher, slack is the spoke where the spokes are tensioned less. Boost derives its better lateral stiffness from the tense side being 3 mm further to the right. And here's the wrap you get all the benefits of boost by using one of the common boost hub converters. That is not all. If you use a converted non-boost hub or on an otherwise boost frame, you get, and listen to this, more structurally sound wheel. Here's why. As I mentioned, wheels are asymmetrical and their entire structural integrity is derived from the tense side. The slack side just needs to be tensioned to a fraction of the tense side and the more it deviates from it, the less solid the rear wheel is, or any wheel really. On a 142mm hub centered over the dropouts, this asymmetry is about 67%, which means that the slack side has about two-thirds of the tension of the tense side. On a boost wheel, this goes up to 71%, which is 4% improvement. Obviously, that's quite significant. Nothing to write, write home about, but it's significant. But on a 142mm hub converted to boost spacing using one of the commonly co uh, available converters, this asymmetry drops down to 77%. That's a whopping 10% improvement over the 142mm hub non converted in a 142 frame. But that's not all. We all know and love the backpedaling issues, it's one of the most popular uh, clips on my channel. Uh, chain dropping in random moments, especially when in extreme chain line, because uh, the chain line is the issue here. Core reason, however, is that the rear chain line, is the middle of the cassette, is offset from the front chain line, which is the middle of the, of the uh, crank set, or middle of the, of the cock set, chain ring set, middle of your front chain ring, because you have just one. Anyhow, the offset is about uh, 7 to 10 millimeters. It varies by a varying quarter of millimeters, but it's about 7 to 10, at least on MTV. Although this problem, as gear count went up, was also transferred to road bikes, especially now when road bikes are getting the chain stays shorter and shorter, so this is yet more and more uh, annoying. How does this pertain to boost? 
Well, Boost, instead of correcting the offset chain lines, just shifted all the problems by 3mm to the right side of the bike. Which was a real shame, because we had a perfect opportunity to somewhat fix the issue. Maybe not even make it a problem anymore. Because... Here is the crux of the issue, or here is the crux of the problem, because I'm using the word issue for the second time. I'm not some sort of a Luddite. I like progress. But I like progress. Not, for, uh, not a change for the sake of change. And, of course, the change for the sake of more and better stuff. If stuff gets shuffled around, major interfaces are broken, I want uh, major improvements to be introduced. Tapered sears, for example, are great. They fixed certain problems. Clutch derailers, fine, no objections there. Slack head angles, great. When you're riding mountain bikes, slack head angles are great. Gravel bikes, fine. Disc brakes, I love disc brakes on, on just about everything. I honestly say that uh, we are like 20 years late on with disc brakes on the road bikes. And soon someone will stick their head from their well, rear end and we will migrate towards 36 inches, inches ish millimeters, 36 millimeter uh, diameter seat tubes because dropper post, well, just need some breathing room. You're not going to get something reliable from something that's just 30 millimeters. We need something bigger when it comes to uh, seat tube, seat tube, seat tube, seat tubes. Yeah. Well, I can even say that the uh, one by drivetrains, even though I despise them, in the niche of MTBs, uh, read it in the actual mountains, are a fine addition. They solve some issues, they're great. <sighs> even if it comes at the cost of not being able to mount a front derailleur to my hypothetical new bike, which I inadvertently am going to bike in a few years or months. But boost. Boost smells like backdoor installment of plant obsolescence. It is more better just to warrant its existence. Adapters exist that change the old wheels to newer frames. Spare parts for older frames are going to be available for years come. I mean, 7 speeds cassettes are still available. The issue is somewhat, well, different. Boost is progress done wrong. All it does is throwing hurdles for an, for an enthusiast such as me to cycle my gear, his gear, her gear around and provides very little actual benefits. Wheels are a touch more laterally stiffer. That's about it. Great. But boosted old school wheels are just as stiff, but also more balanced. They are better than native boost wheels. That's all kinds of wrong. And front boost Front boost exists solely to annoy people. Very, very few, well, riders had problems with front wheels. And frankly, well-built front wheel is almost eternal. If the powers that be, read SRAM, FOX, Shimano, Trek, Specialized, really wanted to push actual progress here, uh, what should have been done is, well, firstly, leave the front wheels alone, newer 20mm boost, okay, fine, whatever. Old 20mm is dead anyway, so whichever. Besides, it is trivially backwards compatible with all 20mm, so whatever. But 50mm boost is completely superfluous. But I guess Fox wants to push units. Secondly, either push for asymmetric rear triangles, specialized 2006 style to equalize the wheel, or just go for 127 by 12 already. We should have been there years ago on just about any mountain bikes in my humble opinion. Anyhow, thirdly, since 1x is a thing these days, finally equalize the front and rear chain line, get that chain ring in the middle of the cassette, fix all those backpedaling issues for people that, well, have been having those issues. Fourthly, just kill the quick release already. Whomever thought of 141 quick release should be forced to adjust cantilever brakes for all eternity. I mean that. But I guess we'll get all of that, maybe without the punishment by adjusting cantilever brakes, in a carefully planned, scheduled and executed bits of progress. Because Bike Biz never wastes an opportunity to sell more stuff. 
Anyhow, this is my boost rant. If you liked, consider subscribing and I have more epic rants in preparation, so stay tuned. Uh, thumb up this video. I wrote some. Sorry, I wrote some garbage here.